Uh, we should give that to Liz, I think. Okay. Hey, gentlemen. Can I start? Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, so we're underway. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the Amherst Board of Assessors is being conducted via remote participation. Is everybody um, on? Is everybody's video and audio working properly? Ken? Yes. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, this meeting is being recorded to the web um, and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast. Um, and now I call the meeting to order. So um, I think we go first to the February 11th, 2021 meeting. Have you, Gentlemen, have you all had a chance to review those minutes? Yes. Yeah, I just have a few maybe clarifications on the residential exemption paragraph. Certainly. Okay. Um, where we say 58%, maybe we add the words of the town's total housing units. So we know what that means. Are we going to say total housing units or total uh, taxable housing units? Uh, I guess it's taxable. It's the, the figure is 10,258, if you want to throw that in there. 10,258. And then I would delete the nine residential properties above 1 million. That's nice. Yeah. There's nothing to do with the exemption. And then the residential exemption Lexington Mass Survey is a good resource, mm -hmm. just to say what that's about. You cut off there, Ken. I'm sorry. You said what? Uh, the residential exemption Lexington Mass Survey is a yeah. is a good resource. Okay. Just to say what that's in there for. Okay. Any other um, changes to the minutes or adjustments to the minutes? All right, I move that those minutes be approved for f February 11th, 2021. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Now we go on to the motor vehicle uh, abatement reports. I'm bring those up for you, gentlemen. Okay, can everybody see the shared screen? Yes. 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 We've got three weeks of them, right? To do? Um, yeah, we got a few. Mm -hmm. Okay, that first set. Anybody want to say anything about that? It's $518.44. Uh, I recommend we approve those nine abatements for February 18th to February 12th to, uh, what is it? Second to the 12th. Second to the 12th. Yeah. The upper left. Oh, okay. Okay. On the agenda, it's a little, it's been, there's been a mistake on the agenda. I was reading. Yeah, it, it should be the yeah, second. It's February 2nd to the February 12th. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll say it should make a, make a, um, yeah, there's a adjustment to the agenda. Yeah. yeah. There's a numerical error on the agenda. I thought uh, I had covered everything. I move mm -hmm. to approve those, uh, that, that set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Second screen. I move we approve it. We did. Uh, we need another screen, uh, Liz. Oh, I see. Sorry, I'm coming. Yeah, you're with me. There you go. This is uh, our second group of uh, abatements. Okay, this is from February 22nd to February 26th. Right. 31 abatements totaling $3,162. Is it 100? Yep, you're right. Yeah, $162.94. Right. I have moved to approve those abatements. Second. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And Thank one more. And one more to go. Can you see the next abatement, John? Yep. Okay. This is a uh, this is for March fourth. Five abatements totaling two hundred and thirty three dollars and eighty four cents. I move to approve those five abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Now we have to go to lean releases. Hmm. Yeah, we have two lean releases and these are releases that are uh, old releases that should have been filed on the land record for transfer of property from the Stultz family. Okay, you're, uh, you're, we're having trouble with your sound, Liz. This is a release that should have been issued back in 2011 okay. when the Stultz family transferred property to the town. And the attorney, uh, attorney Zomek contacted me and said that um, you know these releases were not were not received. So here is the lien. And are there there are two of them? Is that right? This is the first lien. Yeah. And this is the release that will be filed to release that lien. Okay. Tell me if I'm going too fast. No. Nope. This is the second lien. And this is the release that would be filed on behalf of the Board of Assessors to release that lien as well. And I thought perhaps, um, considering our last con conversation, it might be good to show you um, what property we're looking at. Can you see that map I'm putting up? Not yet. Okay, can you see the property? It's actually yeah. this property here. It's uh, running along the river. Oh, okay. Three C twenty two. Highlighted twenty five on it. All right. And at one time, this was Chapter sixty one A. Is that right? That's correct, and that's why we're giving the releases to those liens. So they've been paying normal taxes since two thousand eleven or whatever. No, they have not. No. It's just that now they want to do something else and okay. said we found these liens. Well help me out as far as if we had done it according to when we should have done it, they would have been paying higher taxes since then, right? They were recategorized by the assessor's office. However, the lien releases that were on the land record were not filed in the, the Hampshire County file, the Hampshire County land record. So these are notifying anybody that's doing a title search of these, these properties formerly owned by the Stoltz, that these properties have been transferred to the town and the lien against them has been released by the town. And are there, there are two, are there, there are two liens because there are two properties? Is that right, two parcels? Um, there are a couple of different parcels and they were um, parsed out um, to, Parcel 22 and parcel 25. And oh, if you okay. look at this map, that's one of the reasons I'm doing it. Okay. There's one and a half acres. That's three feet 25. That's 25. Parcel above it is 3C22 that borders the Cushman River or Cushman okay. Brook. Okay. Okay. So those are the two that we're releasing. Help me. I'm slow this morning. Um, Okay, at one time the own, homeowner owned these and he Correct. put them in, in, in the, into Chapter 61 at one time. That's right, it was the Stultz Farm. And then in 2011, you're saying? December they, 21st of 2011, it was transferred to the town for $140,000. Oh, okay, so we, we got it transferred to the town. And at that point it came out of Chapter 61, but officially it, legally didn't because the town forgot to file recently. We did not release the lien, that's part of the process. Okay, okay. so these- took, We categorized the property, we did transfer the property to the town, so there wasn't continued tax bills. However, um, 
the situation was that the lien was still present on the land records. And, up, and it wasn't an annoyance until this time when they wanted to do further. Do further. So, so currently these properties are in the title or owned by the town of Amherst. That's correct. Okay. And part of the conservation. Did, did these homeowners pay taxes for the last 10 years and they shouldn't have? I clarified no. No. They have not been, been paying taxes, even under no, it, chapter even under chapter 61A. I mean you still it, it's, it's, purely, a, it's it, purely a record keeping situation, Ken. Okay, yeah. because you still pay some taxes under 61A. They're not yeah, all paid. the town is the town has been owning the land since 2011. Right. I, I understand. I'm just under I, I'm struggling to understand why this didn't come to anybody's notice. Like they haven't been paying taxes and are the assessor's records show this is owned by the town? Right. Since 2011. Right. And 61A is farmland, right? That's right. And also agricultural land. Yeah. Farm farmland on farm. So it wouldn't have been paying taxes anyway, right? If they were still owning the property, right, but the town they would have been still paying taxes, but they mm -hmm. transferred the property to the town, making that portion of the property exempt anyway. So no one would pay taxes on the right. property since 2011. Well, you know, under 61A, don't you pay reduced taxes still? Yes. Yeah, so they would have been paying some taxes. Okay, that's fine. As long as the town taxes owns the land and... I understand. I'm just trying to. Yeah. I'm just under. I'm struggling to understand why this didn't come to anybody's attention before now. Mostly because it was transferred to the town. You're fading again, Liz. It did not get transferred to another individual. It was transferred to the town. But so I would have thought when you did your tax, when you did your changes to the assessment base, I would have thought something would have rang a bell. Not you, but whoever. Did it. Normally what happens is the, the attorney will ask for that clearance, but it yeah. was transferred to the town. Yeah. So in, that, in some cases that can fall through the crack when we're dealing with exempt property. Okay. It's going from a taxable to an exempt status. Okay. Got it. So are we approved to release the liens? Yes. I move that we approve both of those lien releases on those two on those two parcels. Thank you. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, discussion about the residential exemption and uh, unfortunately we had scheduled in a, a meeting, but uh, both David and I and actually Okay, I really cannot hear you, Liz. Um, I don't know what the problem is on the ear end, but fading in and out. Yeah. Don't know how to increase the, the microphone. Mm. I think if you look right at the microphone when you speak, you might be might not fade. If you turn your head any at all, I think you fade. Yeah, it seems to be that every time I turn my head at, at any point to look at anything else, yeah. it, it, it sends to make it difficult for you to hear me. Sorry. Um, basically, the residential exemption uh, committee, which is uh, Ken, David, and myself, uh, we were supposed to reconvene, but we, David and I have been sick. So I apologize. We were not able to reconvene. Oh. However- Are you um, feeling better now? I am, thank goodness. Good, good. How about David? David is Boy, I don't know going, what's going on. <laughs> going to the doctor. And so forth. Yeah. Um, because of HIPAA regulations, I can't hear anything. Yeah, yeah Liz, we're, oh. not hearing, we're not hearing you, Liz. Basically, um, you know, he's nothing serious, I think. It's just That's that um, we are very cautious, as, as you oh. can imagine. We're getting almost to that last lap to get those shots out. Gentlemen, did you get your shots? I got mine scheduled tomorrow. Good for you. We're, we're finished. <laughs> Good. Young. You're too young. 
No, we have so, both of them. We're too old. <laughs> what I would like to share with you is the um, the latest draft of the uh, survey. But one of the things that I I, I found out through our uh, investigation, if you will, the majority of the towns that have implemented this residential exemption did not do a survey of the community before they instituted it. They used uh, statistics from the census, which at the time were more current, and they used um, other demographic measures um, to determine whether or not they move forward with their residential exemption. So when I was asking them for surveys, they were looking at me like I had two heads. Uh, they, they just did not go that route to determine their population before they instituted such a major, major uh, exemption that'll, that'll uh, impact quite a lot of people. But um, in light of that, I, I did draft the exemption, if you all would like to look at it. And this was drafted, I can't take credit for this. Most of this was done by David and, and Ken. Um, I just did a few things to kind of format it and that was it. Now what'll happen is before the survey goes out, and I have looked at a couple of different ways of, of doing this. Um, we, we can put it on the survey monkey. So folks can reply to their survey on the survey monkey, but I don't think we get around sending it. I think we have to send out the paper survey and give them that option to reply via paper or survey monkey if we want to do that route. Uh, uh, Liz, question is, are you sure this is the latest one? That it's you the draft? latest one. Okay, because this is the one I thought I did with, and I got, when I printed out your latest one, there was a, it's a different, maybe it was something different. No, I, you know, I, I had um, initially <laughs> looked at one that was just simple. And yeah, that's the one I printed out. I didn't Yeah, I, I, I think this one's more comprehensive. Yeah. Okay, I can I can bring up the simple one. No, um, I guess my thought right now is we need to stop on the survey thing until we get more feedback from the town manager and vice president, your okay. boss, and put a bigger group together. Now my question is, should that be approached by you, Ken, or should that be approached by myself or David? Who should bring well, this to the I'm happy to help in any way, but I think you need to lead it. Okay. And approach your the last block. time I mentioned expanding this group for residential exemption, um, the, the town manager said he was not in favor of that. That's why I was wondering whether or not perhaps yourself would like to bring this to his attention. He was, he not, was not in favor of the survey? He was not or? in favor of bringing in other citizens. Oh, okay. Well, that's the, his call. Uh, okay. It's just, there's just so much we can do. The, right. David, the three of us. Right. And especially that's the hard thing about trying yeah. to institute something like this is that there's so many directions it can take. And I guess I think, did everybody get a copy of the draft of the one pager that turned out to be four pagers? I did. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my thought would maybe we just send it like it is right now, Liz, to your boss. I mean, just going up the chain of command and ask him. Okay, this is where we are. We need feedback from you at least. And if okay. you want to talk just to Just so you have clarification, Sean was supposed to join us. I don't know if he's in the audience. Oh. Can anybody tell if he's in the audience? I can't. No, there's just the four of us. Okay. Well, he was trying to get to us today, but you know, everybody's doing a million sure. things. So um, Sean Magnano is my boss. He's my supervisor. Yeah, so I so I would have to go to Sean, and then Sean yeah. would have to appeal to Paul. Yeah, well, I I'm not pushing for Paul. I'm just saying, Sean needs to make a decision here what we do, and if he needs input from Paul, then he needs to go seek input from Paul. But if he thinks he can make the call, well, what I would do now that that Sean is in office, um, I would ask him. Then he will decide whether he can make that decision or whether he has to run it up the line. Liz, we miss what you were saying. Um, I will give this information to Sean. Sean will make that determination as to whether he can expand the, the committee or leave it as is. 
or run it up the, the, the line to Paul with his input. That is the four pager. I will send him um, the four page analysis and the application of the survey. Uh, yeah, Ken, I would just like to, um, if you could look it over and make any um, proofreading corrections you'd like to make. Well, I guess I'd put it out to you guys. <laughs> um, well, do you have any thoughts about how we should change this or not? Because it, this is I, just a one cut. I, I'm not, I'm, um, you, you have some uncertainty about some of your data, apparently. Right. Well, I have a, lot, a lot of questions about that because I can't tie numbers together. We have different spreadsheets and okay. I don't no. think it's I think it's in the ballpark, but it's not good enough to share with anybody beyond Sean or Paul. Okay, all right. Well, so let's okay. leave it at that. And so it's not going to the council, in other words. No, no. Okay. Yeah. All um, right. So okay, so basically the survey will be sent to the the analysis thus far. Yes, okay. I just want to speaking as the chair, I would just like to be able to deliver on the promises that we've made to the council. Mm -hmm. And if this is as far as we need to go, that's fine. I'm, I'm a little, uh, I guess I'm a little, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Hesitant? Um, unsure about the value of a survey. Okay. I am too at this point. Yeah, I agree. So, so perhaps the survey should be next. Yeah, I wouldn't send idea. that. I wouldn't send that on. Mm -hmm. Right now, okay. we're we're primarily saying, based on rough data, this is what we see. Um, but to go any further beyond this rough data, we need more. We need more people involved. And it it may very well be that from thirty five thousand feet, which is what essentially we have here, yeah. um, you can tell that that an exemption would not work here in town would create problems. Well, I'm not sure we want to jump to that conclusion. Mm. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm just saying that maybe, maybe uh, Sean and Paul can tell that. Okay, that's fair enough. Right. I, I think this, uh, what you've done, Ken, uh, and thank you, uh, what the committee's done is, is um, a, a high level overview without specific conclusions. Right. Um, yeah. And, 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 and that's good. It, it points us in a direction that says, hey, we need more detail. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I think, Lee, you're right on. We can't come to conclusions unless we involve more people that dig deeper into a lot more information. Right. For example, I didn't really understand. Um, also, I want to echo what Lee has said. I really appreciate the work you've done, Ken. I was a little uncertain about the, um, the, con the uh, conclusions you drew about rent. Well, there's no conclusions here. No, I was okay. trying to just ask, answer some questions that people have come up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the rents were from David. He looked at what rents would go, have to go up to cover the increases for the apartments. So yeah. he actually ran math, mathematical, what the rents would have to go up to cover the increases. Can, can it, that paragraph um, that, that talks about the rent, it says it is likely if competitive rentals markets allow it. Maybe yeah. that sentence um, does go towards a conclusion and maybe somehow that can be softened. Okay. Because I've, you say you say landlords will likely try to pass the tax increase. Which I think is true, but if there's too right. many apartments and they can't rent their apartment, they're not going to they're going to reduce the rent to get more tenants. Yeah. I see where you're going. Yeah. But that goes towards a conclusion that that would actually happen. Okay. So, so this, has, this has not been shown to anybody else at town hall. Is that correct, Liz? My understanding, it's just between um, this board. And, um, and David and me. David. Okay. So, is there some uh, is there some particular action that that the board needs to take at this time? Well, I think the board needs to um, determine what exactly we distribute. You, you're gonna have to speak up, Liz. We're not. We're out we're here. going to need some kind of guidance from the board. What exactly we're going to give them? So 
at this point, you've said no survey. Um, you've been distributed the four page um, analysis that was done. Uh, do you want me to distribute it in that way directly to Sean? Yes, I, I, I guess uh, speaking for myself. No, I agree. I would like Sean to see it. And then, um, and then perhaps um, Sean and the town manager can um, can um, then indicate what they what further information they want. How do you want me to represent the, the expansion of the committee? I'm um, I don't know. It would have been really helpful if Sean had been on this call with all of us. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And maybe we just need to set up another call. And we could have him. Um, oh, it's going to have to be a public meeting call, but that's all right. We can still. It's public up. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to wait another month for a next meeting. Okay, so you would like me to set up a meeting? Because I, I really want everybody to hear what Sean's saying, so we have yeah. some guidance, all of us. You know what? I am going to bring Sean in if he's available. That's the nice thing. Okay. Anyway, so that we'll he wait. Check to see if he's become free. Okay. So that he can join. Because you know, like when I come into these meetings, I close my door. Uh, another department head is going to say, "He's in the meeting. I can't." Talk about him. Would welcome him to join. Well, I don't know what's going on today, Liz, but we're not hearing it at all. You just left the room. So can you hear me better? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a lot I'm better. sorry. Yeah. I, I just don't want to be in the room with him and not be respectful and have my mask on. Okay, well, that's a lot better now for me. Yeah, unfortunately, this is the downside about having someone physically with me. Um, I can have him work at his computer if that's the only other thing I can do. Uh, so let's see if he's ready. Okay. So Sean, Sean might be able to join us before we conclude. He's in a call right now. Okay. Um, but Stephen's just stepped out, so I can. So maybe. Um... Well, part of it is Sean. Unfortunately, Sean needs to read this and think about it before he can really react to us. Yes, I think that's prudent. So. He can right. digest what there... we've what we've come up with. Do you want me to share the Lexington study with him? Right. Or... No, I wouldn't go there. All right, I, I move that we I move that we share this uh, this draft with uh, Mr. Mangano, and if Mr. Mangano thinks it's um, appropriate, Mr. Bachelman. Okay. Seeking guidance on where we go from here. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Seeking guidance on where we go from here. Include uh, yes. So, um, do, are we are we unanimous on that? I'm fine with that. I'm okay. With that. Is there anything you want to do to this draft, uh, Ken, before you send it off? That was my other question. Well, it's up to you. If you guys have inputs you want me to change, it's a. Well, it's your product. So, um, well, yeah, we, I mean, we, because of the open meeting law, we can't really be in, we couldn't really be involved in generating it. So, um, but you can't, you can be in, in with open meeting now. You I, can, I mean, I, I see question yeah. marks. I see some question marks on the, on the report. Um, and I wonder about those. Um, that's because I don't know what, I don't have good data. Yeah. So should we just, instead of a question mark, put data not available? Well, I think I had the question marks before I put that big thing at the top where I, the, the latest draft says the data is still being worked on to develop a single database. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think you I that. Yeah, and those you question marks were before I put that. Right. So I can take the question marks out if we leave that data thing on the beginning. Okay. Is that all right, Liz? Fine with me. Whatever. Yeah. Now, as I understand, whatever makes this as clear and concise no. as possible. I, I can take the question marks out. I think in most cases. All right. And, that, and as I understand it, the break-even point stays the same no matter what the percentage exemption is. Correct. Correct. Okay. Oh yeah, that was my only other comment, Ken, that you state the break even in the second point, 
but it. Um, well, let me take yeah. that back. No, uh, help me out, Liz. I think it moves, but it moves very little. It's it's only you know based on the percentage percentage change. Yeah, it might move by a couple thousand up and down. Yeah. This this break point is specifically for twenty percent. Oh, okay. It's 570,000, is that right? I thought it was 574 or something like that. Yeah. Okay, well, we have good news. So Liz- um, He's going to join us as, Sean is gonna join us as an audience member. Oh, okay. You don't have to sit up. But I wanna bring up that report. I mean, I have that report ready to share since he's going to join us. Yeah, from it's he's going to have to read it and think about it, though. I don't want a quick reaction from him. So you don't want me to put it up to share because oh, you when put I put up. something up to share, it's going to be shared with the public. Um, no, I'm not ready to do that. Uh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. So All right then, why don't we, um, you know, wait till he gets. Uh, so uh, there was a motion. Um, are we? But we're we're moving to a share Ken's draft with Sean. Is that yeah? Okay. All to those guy, favor, yeah to get guidance. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. I see, Sean is with us. Okay. As an attendee. Welcome to the board of assessors, Sean. Can we give him a voice? No, I don't see him here yet. Andy. Ah, here we go. Allow to talk. There you go. Ron, can you hear us? Yes. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Thank you Hi. all for letting me listen in today. I, um, I looked at the agenda and it seemed like it would be a good meeting uh, to participate in. Um, I do have to leave at noon, but, um, but it's nice to see all of you. I got to talk all, to all of you a little while ago. And so... Um, here, if there's any questions, or otherwise I'll just listen. Well, we've had a um, we've had a study of um, conducted by Ken um, and Liz they, and David, the three of us. Yeah, uh, on the residential exemption. Yeah, and just a quick high overview, Sean is. We are able to put some data together. It's not complete, but it's in the ballpark. The data. Okay. And, and this is on the this is on the number of owner occupied or non owner occupied properties. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we prepared a, a one pager that turned into four pagers. When I say we, it's really me working with data from Liz and David to put together this draft, and I've shared it with. Um, the other two members of the board, um, but it's still primarily my draft using numbers. Okay. And what we're seeking right now is guidance from you after you look at the draft, where we go from here, because there's no conclusions drawn in this draft. It's just data that is very rough data, but in the ballpark of what we think might be you know, found. But what we're saying is we can't really go beyond this data without bringing in some other people to work on it. Okay. No, absolutely. So I think um, I can take a look at it and, okay. you know, a, you know, see what work you did and, and what the data looks like now. Um, but I can also give some thought with Liz um, and I can also connect with the town manager about, you know, what are our next steps with um, sharing perfect. this information out, working with the council, you know, what, I, I know we talked about maybe bringing this to the council earlier um, to help them get an understanding of this before, you know, before the tax rate vote and all that thing later in the fall. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Okay. Sean, Sean, is it this council that will vote on the tax rate or the next council? I believe it is, I'll have to double check. I believe it's this one, right, Liz? I think we've had that vote in December. So this one, to... it would be the December. Does this council have a lame duck period after I'll, the November election? I'll have to double check. I thought the terms for new, you know, if, if there's any change in the council membership, that 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 the 
they begin on January 1st, but I'll have to double. And, and so therefore, if the vote was, um, if the vote on the tax rate was in December, then well, the, the vote it would be the, the current tax council. rate is um, after I do my classification. Right. Do you remember when that was um, this year? Yeah, Liz? that was November. It was November and December. Okay. So I think it would be the, the current council, but that'll be when I get come back after reviewing this with some of my thoughts, um, I'll confirm all that about what council would vote on it and roughly when. And again, we may want to separate a decision on this from the tax rate decision because you know, this is going to take a while to implement if it is, if, if it does move forward. So we almost want that to be its own discussion track with the council. Yes, I would assume, for example, that a even consideration of a, a residential exemption would involve public forums, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And there would have to be some kind of a, a process of educating the public on, on what it involved. Mm -hmm. And there, well, and, I'd have, and I'd have to look and see if there are any subcommittees you know, there may be some subcommittees of the council that would also have to get involved um, out to, you know, I'm thinking maybe potentially the finance committee mm -hmm. and potentially um, like the town services outreach, the TSO committee um, for something that sort of, you know, would be a sort of a big, uh, I'll have to see what the data looks like, but could be a big change in sort of how the taxes are, are gathered. Okay, so just so you understand what happened before you arrived, the three of us um, agreed unanimously to share this report with you. Okay. All right. This draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Sean, I'd stress this draft is only for you and the town manager to look at. It shouldn't go anywhere outside. Okay. Or, no. Yeah. Not. It's not um, finalized. I, I'll understand. Because, I understand. Sorry, although I don't know what the effect of talking about this in a public meeting is, Sean. But yeah, um, I mean, it, it's public now. But I think to your point, to reiterate, it's very. It's draft form. It's not finalized. So until it's a final report, you know, okay. we shouldn't yeah, make this, we shouldn't make decisions based on a, a draft. No, th this is like the first inning of a nine-inning game. <laughs> I'm serious. This is just well, in spring well, training, they're only they're only seven innings. So oh, that's okay. great. <laughs> that's great. I, I've, I've heard that talk uh, used to talk about the virus. So that's <laughs> that's really because good. these are rough numbers with no conclusions and no thought process of what the effect might be of doing anything okay so yeah so it seems like this is this is sort of send the baseline for us to then take you know think about what our decision would you know, I mean, decision I, tree is going to be on this i mean i don't know what other members think but i believe that if you look at this you may decide that that this is the end of the fact finding process in other words you might decide okay we know enough now and then on the, and then you can make a recommendation or whatever to the council but okay uh, but i i think what we need is guidance do we do we uh is there going to be a continuing fact finding process and who does it okay how i didn't um how long is the report as it is right now uh four pages four. okay that's not too bad all right oh it's um, it's very high level and um i well I'm happy to answer any questions you have, Sean or Liz or anybody else about, because I pretty much did 99% of this except for the numbers. Liz and David helped a lot in getting the numbers together. Okay. But the numbers are still, they don't tie the, we're using spreadsheets, different spreadsheets, and they don't add up right. So we know there's something lacking. Okay, okay. so there's a little more work to do on that. All right. When you say they don't add up, can that means they don't check? They don't check against other numbers. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay. And uh, the the um, would it be fair to say that the um, the statement about rents is a bit of a stretch in terms of the 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 basis for making drawing that conclusion or drawing that tentative suggestion? Well, rents impact well, rents. Yeah, I didn't view it as a conclusion. That's okay. where we differ. I just said if the rental markets don't allow the landlords to pass it on, they're not going to be able to pass it on. Um, that's the only point I was trying to make. I wasn't trying to conclude they would or would not pass it on. So mm -hmm. is that one thing, One, I mean, that is one of the big questions that I've had in talking with Liz and, um, and David. Does your report look at the impact on apartment complexes? Uh, at a very high level, it takes what the taxes would have. It takes the increases the apartments would have. Okay. 
and spreads them among their units, and therefore it says how much a unit would have to. What the potential increase more. in rents could be. Yeah. Okay. That the landlord could pass it all on. So, and again, I'm I'm happy to the part of the challenge, Sean, we've had is the rest of the three of us haven't been able to talk because of the public law. Open right. meeting law. And yeah. so we can't work, no, the three of us can't work together. I just volunteered <laughs> to do some work and kind of just to do it, but you know, the, so, it's been tough. So, Ken, so Lee and I are like second and third wheels here, and Ken is doing <laughs> all the work uh, yeah. with Liz and Dave. So, but as I understand the open meeting law, we're not allowed to um, deliberate on it. Yeah. 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 Well, don't worry. We'll, we'll have projects for you two to work on. Yeah. So, well, we got, we got some other stuff we can give you. Um, it's not the work, it's the lack of input. I mean, yeah, this, this yeah, is too much my input without other people's input, which, I yeah, don't. I think one way we can, I mean, I'll have to double check and make sure this is okay. I mean, one way I think we can, can you know, if, if Liz is sort of the hub and she solicits the input from people directly and um, on these, and then when you have your meeting, she can kind of bring it all together. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so as long as you're just communicating directly with Liz, you know, you share a document out at a meeting and then your feedback goes directly to Liz only. Um, that, you know, that's one way at least you can kind of keep things moving in between meetings. And well, that's what we've done to this point. Okay, good, perfect. Because mm -hmm. Sean, I have a, a strong feeling that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wanna be tied with anything going to the council unless we get more input from other people. Because I don't no, think- Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll come back with next steps. Okay. You know, those next steps may be, you know, it'll be obviously refining this report and, and then deciding, you know, is there going to be a recommendation made and who's making that recommendation, whether it be staff, the board of assessors, you know, both. Um, and, and then working on, like you said, what's that next, those next steps for outreach with the community and with different subcommittees. Um, but, but just getting the survey okay. updated was a, a nice accomplishment and moving this forward because we really needed that to get the updated numbers um, to drive, you know, how big of an impact this is. So, so that's great. Okay. Having said that though, maybe we should let them what we've determined we're losing you Liz you may wish to express to him what we've decided on the survey idea oh well, Sean you were talking about this report not the survey right um so yeah what I just said was in regards to the report and then the, yeah, okay. the numbers that were updated as a result of the survey there is no survey there's no survey we haven't done the survey uh, okay so how were the um so so we so we haven't updated the sort of inventory of owner occupied properties yet. No. Okay. So that would be potentially a next step. Um, if we wanted to get updated numbers would be to do that. Okay. Yeah. To do a survey that would cover a lot of things. Right. To clean up the data more. Okay. Yeah. And the report does make reference to what Ken just said. Okay. All right. No, this is, but okay. again, this is, this is good. This is a big project. So I think, um, if we just keep moving it forward, you know, keep making progress on it. Um, you know, I don't think anyone's in a rush for this that I've heard of, um, as long as we're making progress and, and keeping, um, yeah. moving, you know, providing but I, information. But I, but I do feel there's some sort of accountability moment for us in at no, when we get to November. Right, we have to come back with, we, we definitely have to come back this year with, you know, additional information from what was provided last year and what progress has been made on this issue. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree with you on that. Okay. All right. Just to be clear, um, you know, the committee. Liz, you're cutting out again. Just to be clear, Ken did develop a plan that was established back in the Where that plan. You're cutting out, Liz. I don't know how. I did. I did get a plan in November that was shared amongst the committee by Ken. So, um, Ken, do can I share that with? Well, I view that as sort of, that was a guess. Like guess an organizational. At that time. Now, I think we need guidance from Sean saying, okay, what's the next step? And again, I think we need more people involved and that those people would put together the plan then. Well, okay. I think the criticism of our, of, of the residential exemption was, um, are we, do we have a plan in place? Are we, are we proceeding in an organized fashion? And that was the criticism that I, I was getting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, for my lens, I just, I wanna make sure we, um, and this speaks a little bit to um, 
what Richard said earlier about when we go back to the council in the fall is I just want to know what milestones we may have over the summer and in the fall so that when we go back, um, we have something tangible and it may be that it, it may not be complete. Um, but you know, if like, if we could get the survey updated and if we could have, um, you know, an a, a analysis of the impact on the apartments, which I think is a really big piece of this um, to inform the decision-making of the council. Um, and then we also need to hear from the council as to what they're trying to, and, and maybe this has been said in the past when I, before I was here, um, you know, what are their goals for something like this? Is the goal to lessen the burden on, um, on lower valued properties? Is it to, you know, is that the sole, you know, at the expense of potentially raising rents on apartments? And, and then again, dig into that impact of, you know, people of lesser means potentially, are we going to be creating a greater burden on them? And is that really what the council is looking for? Okay. I'm going to just going to say, since I think maybe I watch the council more than the other two members of the board, that That's there true. are, pro that there are probably no more than one or two council members for the, for whom this is not a settled issue. Okay. So there are, there are only one or two members of the board that I, the, the council that I think are curious about that, that really under that really um, have uncertainty. Let me put it that way. Okay. About the effect of a residential exemption, I think most members of the council, from what I can tell, don't really believe a residential exemption would work here, and there are one or two that are uncertain about it. Okay. All right. No, this is again, this is great, and um, I don't. Know, do you guys meet once a month or twice a month? Once a month. Okay. No, I think between now and, and your next meeting, I can definitely review it and work with Liz and the town manager to come back with an update um, on next steps and, and thoughts on the report. So that, that should be no problem. Okay. So you know, Sean, thinking along what Richard just said is, you might wanna consider some uh, Paul or you or somebody just touching base with the council sometime this you know late spring, like June or something, just give them an update and saying, okay, what are your goals? I mean, to get a better idea of what the goals are of the council. Yeah, no, I think that's good. The town manager has a report where he provides updates on various topics. Um, yeah. So I could definitely see, you know, once maybe one more month, once I, we come back and talk to you all, um, yeah. you know, maybe giving them an update on this in the, in the town manager's report to the council. And then maybe, like you said, trying to get it on a, maybe a summer meeting, you know, I, I hate this, they never have any light agendas at the council level, but, um, you know, if, if there's an agenda where maybe we can get this topic on there, um, just to do it, you know, sort of an update and kind of re, you know, refocus, what are we, you know, we've got this data, we've got this report, we're going to do some outreach, what are, what is, what are we trying to answer for people? I um, think that's key, that's yeah. key. Yes, I mean, I, I think the one thing that the three of us and our assessor cannot answer is the impact on rents. And my sense is that that's kind of the nub of right. the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't say for sure, right, that the rents will go up, but you know that may be some of the outreach that needs to be done is um, working with some of these larger complexes to say, you know, what, when we do this outreach, hear from everybody, you know, and they would be one of the, obviously the stakeholders that we would want to hear from. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Sean, for joining us. This great. No problem. Is Are there any other topics? I've got another 10 minutes. Any other topics I should hang around for, or was this the big one? This was the big one. Have okay. We exhausted this topic, um, Liz and Ken? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, if, um, so I'll, I'll keep an eye out for an email um, with the, the draft report. So, Liz, I'll send you a new one today. Thank you. And you can send it on to Sean then. Okay. All right. Th Part thank you all. Have a good rest of your day. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. Thanks, Thanks for Sean. coming in. No thank problem. You. So what is our next, what is the next topic on our agenda? Topic is really, um, is there any public comment? And there's no public, we don't we don't public to comment at this point. What about, um, um, I see a, uh, list here second. approve. Well, first of all, is there a budget discussion to have too? Well, the budget, um, we really haven't asked for much. Um, we've asked for them to, the biggest thing for our budget was to um, expand my part-time personnel, which you see here. You can do it if you want to say hello. Um, you can talk to him frequently when you call my office. He's been a wonderful addition. So I only have 0.4 of him. 
I've asked that it, you know we give him a full position in the, in the uh, assessor's office. Currently, I share him with the tax office. Um, but you know, I think uh, sharing is a wonderful idea, and if it was only clerical, I think that would be great. But um, where we're lagging is we've lost our professional appraiser. She was certified and she was experienced in the community. And we cut our appraisal staff in half when we did not replace her. And while um, you know, Stephen needs training in appraisal, which I'm providing as best I can, and also through the Massachusetts Association of Assessing Officers and the International Association of Assessing Officers, um, to really absorb that information and focus on that profession, because it is indeed a profession, just like appraisal is a profession. Uh, assessment is a profession and it really does take full time. You know, so, that's basically uh, the, the major component of our, our the assessor's budget, not the board of assessors budget, but the assessor. Well, actually I am part of your board, so I guess it's our budget. Well, I, you know, see, this is the thing. I've never, um, we've never really uh, discussed budget, um, the assessor's um, budget in the Board of Assessors before. I don't know that this is in our bailiwick. Well, you're a member of the Board of Assessors. I'm a member of the Board of Assessors. It's our budget. How we proceed to it. Recommendations. And look at it. And that's about it. That's, you know, other than that, there is some minor you're cutting out again, Liz. Other than that, there's some minor adjustments to our operational budget um, that yes, I've recommended. I've always looked at it. We're, we sort of relied on David to wave a yellow flag if he needed help. Otherwise, he never waved a yellow flag that I recall. I just wanted to give you an overview. Okay. Well, that's now, okay. Um, I, I think that you know, being a member of any organization, you should be aware of where the money's coming from. Are you planning to ask or recommend the additional resource? Um, I have recommended based on um, you know, a, a thorough overview of the office and um, comparing myself to other communities of this size. We have over 40,000 people in our regular population. We expand to 61,000 on a daily basis. So, so would it be a replacement? No, no. It would be an um, addition. What happened was um, the position of the other appraisal position, which was held by Lori Karate, when she retired in December, that position was cut, period, end of sentence. So this would go back to what David had. Right. But we don't have Pelham. She worked on Pelham too, right? She did, but Pelham actually did not have a large amount okay. of the, um, the work that was done. The other thing is, is um, it appears that they want us to expand our database to include the, the college information. We're losing you. We're getting all we need from the reimbursement for state-owned property. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to have to have more man hours into, the, into that process. So can that additional work actually pay for the person? Oh, absolutely. Then what? Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. See, I, I don't know. Confidence. <laughs> I don't know what the mechanism is for the Board of Assessors to express a concern about uh, the principal assessor's budget. I... Well, let me ask you, are you doing some kind of justification memo for the additional person? Yes, I did. Well, can you share that with us so we can sort of maybe sign on with it? I don't know. Sure. Yeah, we have it handy. Richard, while she's pulling that up, I have... I want to, uh, before we end this meeting, uh, um, um, make visible the end of my term. Yeah. Um, um, the, I believe this is for the town manager. Mm -hmm. The 
to uh, handle mm -hmm. um, the vacant, essentially your seat, there's a vacancy at the end of your term. Right. Right. When does that happen? It's July, end of June. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And is it correctly to assume you're willing to stay on? Well, that's one thing I might want to discuss. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, right now I'm thinking for a limited term, maybe not for the, another full three years. Okay. Well, um, but I'm feeling like, especially as, as you know, this, the, what we're doing. And what Ken has done to this point with regard to the to uh, what should happen with the uh, study, I'd like to see that through. So I, I can't seem to put my hands on what I'm looking for. So I, I really um, all I can do is send it to you, or I can bring it up at our next meeting. Well, look. Didn't seem like there was any objection on the part of the the part of who? It didn't seem like there was any objection on the board of finance. Hmm. I guess some way next time, Liz, you, you got to figure out whether you have to have a microphone to speak into. Well, the only thing is, is if I have a microphone, then yeah. then Stephen can't hear you. Okay. Well, I don't know. We're not doing well today. This is not working out well. Sorry about that. I will yeah, try and do it. Right. Um, if that's a direction. Differently idea. next time going forward, I'll have him at his All right. computer. All right. If you could share with us um, between now and the next meeting um, any budgetary um, sit, uh, concern you have, and I'll have to figure out whether the board of assessors. Uh, I, I think there's probably a state statute that governs what we do, uh, as to whether we have any say about your budget because I really don't know whether we do. So- um, Well, I figured that that was a, a primary issue at this time, so I figured I'd bring it to your- No, I don't mind you bringing it up. I just, I'm trying to figure out whether we have a mechanism as the three of, between the three of us to express anything about your budget. And I don't know whether we do or not. So that's probably something I need to figure out. So if you could just send out the memo individually and we can get back to you individually, Liz. So okay. We don't we'll be glad to do so. All right. Now, as I look at the uh, the agenda, I see approved deny real estate personal property abatement applications. Is there any? Is there are there any today for that? No. What you've received is what we have. Okay. All right. Because I'm looking at it on the agenda, so I just wondered about that. So, okay. do you have any? Do you have any feel, Liz? Are you going to get a bunch of abatements coming in? Well, um, we have abatements um, that we have received uh, okay. from the. Uh, mostly from the condominiums because the condominiums um, had an interim adjustment. When something goes over 10%, then the assessor is compelled to raise the assessment. Um, that's the law. So we are getting, um, you know, a number of real estate appeals. I'm trying to bring them up so I can give you a count. Oh, that's all right. But um, I don't think it'll take more than a couple of days. It's nothing, nothing more than we had from the previous, previous year. Okay. How do you stand with commercial owners? You know um, our commercial owners are, well, yeah. five of them that have come in. Okay. You know, next time, Liz, maybe have, have do an invite to Stephen to join us on Zoom. That's what we were discussing. So he can be in another room or something. Understood. Okay. But being okay. that this is his first meeting to join sure. you, no, I thought that it was prudent for him to be with you today. Yeah. We're glad to meet you, Stephen. Yeah. Likewise. Thanks for your help. Lee, Lee, I think you should probably make a call to the town manager mm -hmm. and indicate uh, what you would like to do yeah. after at the end of June yeah. so that we could have maybe a, if either, if you are going to be stepping off or if there is going to be some kind of a nationwide search for your replacement or whatever, <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, so that that can happen seamlessly um, between uh, June and July of next uh, this summer. All right. 
So if you if you have an if you want to express to the the manager what you'd like to do, um, uh, that would probably help. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and I want to do it in the time we've got. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, Lee, personally, I'd love to have you stay on as long as you can. I okay. would like to express that too, but you know, no, I appreciate um, that. I appreciate yeah, I, I, I have a feeling that neither Ken nor I count. No, <laughs> that, so. I don't want you to misconstrue. We don't want to move on to somebody new quick. But, yeah, exactly. you can but, but there is, um, I know that the council has had some conversation with the manager about vacancies and essentially what happens is your term ends and there's a vacancy. Either you fill it or somebody else fills it. I don't know how that works. It's going to work. Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, anything else to, oh, no, let's talk about the next meeting date, April 8th, I propose. Okay. Second Thursday in April. April 8th at 11 p.m.? Yes. I'm sorry, a.m. <laughs> a.m. 11 p.m. would be kind of exotic. <laughs> hey, you know, come on. Okay, That's fine. It's Amherst. Uh, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're breaking the mold, right? Sure. One suggestion, Liz, can you get that agenda topic changed so it doesn't read residential exemption and means test senior tax relief study? Or would you like it to stay just residential exemption? Yeah, you don't like that. Well, I don't know what the, I don't even know what the means test senior is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Basically, that is just whether or not um, we're addressing the folks that are in need. Okay. Well, I'm sure not addressing them. Okay. So not in this study anyway. All right. But you are in a sense because you're determining what the impact of this exemption is going to be on the, on the folks that are um, going to no, be I'm certainly a, affected. It's everybody. Renters, it's not just seniors. That's right. So, but just call it residential exemption study. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, I move to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Liz, for your service to the town. Yes, oh, thanks, thank Liz. you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And it is 12.05. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Remember, all, Bye. these, all these videos are available for you to review should you want to go over something. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Anything You're welcome. Have a good day, gentlemen. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a good weekend. All right. See you.